Good day, everybody. In this video, I would like to explain how to conduct slope stability analysis using software called uh, Slide2. Um, before we start drawing slopes and doing any uh, calculations, let's just go to view and we'll look at the limits. So this is very important. This is first step. If you have a very long slope or very high slope, uh, you'll need to adjust X and Y coordinates. So maybe probably make it a little bit longer. Uh, maybe make it 100 meters or 200 meters, depending on the length of your slope. And same thing with the uh, Y coordinates. If it's a high slope, then you have to adjust. You see here it's limit only 21 meters. So in this case, you probably add more. Uh, for this particular case in this tutorial, I don't really need to do that. So I just cancel it. So let's go to the next step, uh, which will be analysis. And first of all, we'll start with project settings. So project settings, uh, first we'll make sure that we have uh, metric units and then uh, failure direction. This is very important. Um, sometimes people make mistakes. Well, they don't really make mistakes. Um, uh, software doesn't work. It's because uh, for this uh, setup, you will see that you will need to draw the top of the slope on the right hand side. And the slide will be uh, in this direction from the right to the left. So if for some reason you drew a slope, which is top on the left, and the slide will be from left to the right, you have to change the failure direction. So just remember this one, because uh, sometimes uh, students ask me, how come it doesn't work? Well, it doesn't work because the failure direction is wrong. So this is very easy to fix. Even if you make mistake uh, at first, you just come here and change. Okay. Um, next one, soil profile. Well, probably you don't need this one. Scenarios. Um, um, this is, I think, uh, improvement compared to the previous version. You have multiple scenarios. Um, I tried to use it. Um, um, I think uh, the good thing is you can maybe play with uh, different cases, like you can change ground water table. Unfortunately, you cannot change the properties. So the properties will be the same for all the scenarios. So um, I'm not sure if it's that useful. So, well, we're not going to use it in this tutorial anyway. Uh, methods. So methods are actually very important. This is where you select methods of slope stability analysis. You see that you have a list of uh, different methods. Um, the one that you like, you can tick it and untick it. I like uh, Bishop Simplified. I think it's one of the better methods. And I also don't really use uh, Jumbo. I like Morganston price, so I tick this box. So for Morganston price, if you know the theory behind this method, it has a different way of uh, representing interslice force function. So in this case, it will be half sine. So I'm very happy with this one. I'm not going to change this one. And um, another thing that you can probably change a number of slices, you know that for limit equilibrium method analysis, software will uh, divide slope into slices. Uh, in this case, preset as 50, so it will be 50 slices. I think 50 is too many. I'll just change to 25, but it's up to you. 25, 30, 50. I don't think it will change uh, the analysis uh, very much. I don't think it actually will uh, uh, affect it. OK, so um, that's about it. Groundwater. Don't really need to change anything here. We're going to go with just groundwater table. Seismic, we don't have any data on uh, uh, seismic coefficients, so we're not going to use this um, uh, option as well. So I'm going to click OK. Um, next step is uh, we're going to draw a slope. So we need to know slope geometry. You need to know cross section. And uh, what you can do is you go to boundaries. And here it says add external boundary and you start drawing a slope. So remember that the top of the slope will be on the right hand side. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, also, it's a good practice. If you already have coordinates, you can just input coordinates and I'll show how to do it. Uh, but if your coordinates, let's say, start from the top of the slope and finishes at the uh, top of the slope, Make sure that you also add a little bit of uh, space on the right and a little bit of space on the left. Because when you do slope stability analysis, there may be some critical failure planes 
that will actually uh, go and pass the toe. So just always add something to the left and something to the right. Okay, so um, if you are not really satisfied with the slope, the way that you drew it, so uh, you can always uh, adjust the coordinates. So the way to do it, so you right click on the shape and it says here, edit coordinates. So you have this um, table and you can adjust all the coordinates. Let's say I don't like the first point, maybe make it negative six, right? Uh, click OK. So I think it moved a little bit. Um, another point is uh, you can add uh, more points. You can add points to make it more accurate, your uh, cross section, your profile. Um, what I want to do right now, just want to change, uh, I want to move this point, make it perpendicular. And now I'm very happy. So I'm very happy with the slope. That's what I wanted to um, investigate. Okay, so next point is um, we're going to draw different layers of rocks. Um, for this particular case, let's have just uh, two layers of rocks. And I'm going to go to boundaries and uh, add material boundary. Um, and this draw boundary like this. Uh, right click, right click mouse, done. Okay, so this will be top layer, bottom layer. How do you know where to draw this boundary? Well, you should look at your cross section and should look at your borehole logs. In the borehole logs, you will see the depth of each layer. So uh, you have to measure the depth uh, from the surface uh, to make it accurate. Okay, so I drew the boundary. Now I'm going to assign properties to these two layers and make them different. I'm going to go to properties and define materials. So I already have uh, five different materials that I can uh, recycle. If let's say I have slope with more than five materials, I can always add another one, material six. So let's say that material one is uh, sandstone and it has unit weight of, uh, let's say, 23. Um, we're going to use more Coulomb failure criteria. So this is the formula. You see there is different options. Um, sometimes you can even go with Hook Brown. So um, uh, you can uh, watch my video on rock data, how to use Hook Brown failure criteria to get cohesion and uh, friction angle. So I believe this option is already built in. You will have to just change M uh, I, which will be the one for sandstone, I believe it's 17. Uh, then you will need to provide unconfined uh, compressive strength here. So, and then it will estimate cohesion friction angle. I'm going to do go with just more Coulomb. And typically, we should already have some value of cohesion and uh, friction angle. Let's say that it's very weathered at sandstone and it has um, pretty low cohesion. Just I'll just put maybe 20, right? So I don't have any data, just I'm like make up these numbers. And friction angle is 35. Where you can get these numbers, you get these numbers from a laboratory test or from reports. Uh, this is something that you really need to know so that you can run this analysis. So I'm going to click OK. And um, OK, uh, let's go back material properties. Uh, and the second material, uh, let's make it really hard, maybe granite. And that's fresh granite, put maybe 27. Um, cohesion, because it's really fresh, can be 3 MPA and friction angle 45. It's okay. So now I have two layers. What I'm going to do here, right click at, uh, on the bottom layer and you see this assign material and I'm going to assign granite. So what I have now, I have sandstone on the top and granite at the bottom. So before I do analysis, uh, I'm going to also draw um, groundwater level, right? So let's say that sandstone is very porous and it's very weathered. So there will be groundwater table in sandstone, but not in uh, granite because granite is very fresh and there is no water there. So what I will do, I'll go to boundaries again, add water table. Well, I don't know exactly where groundwater there, just um, 
draw it somewhere like this. And then right click, done. And it's ask, um, so ground water will be in all the materials. And I'm going to say no. Uh, I'm going to say that it's only in sandstone. So ground water level only in sandstone. OK. So uh, now we're ready to do uh, analysis. Um, the option that I like using for um, slope stability analysis, it's called um, Go Surfaces and uh, Outer Grid. You see currently it's um, not available, it's grayed out. So um, um, before in the previous slide it was available, but uh, the way to get it back, you just go to surface options. Uh, you will select a circular um, failure plane, so it's already a preset, and then go here and click grid search and click OK. So now when you go here, uh, surfaces, you will see that you can use outer grid, and that's what I'm going to use. Um, you can change the spacing. From my experience, 20 by 20, it's very good, so don't really need to change much. I'm going to click OK. It's not going to make it, um, if you change it, let's say 30 to 30, it's not going to make it any better. It's going to be like same data. And uh, now I'm going to go to compute. You can go analysis and compute. Well, I need to save it. Uh, click save. And I'm going to do compute. So it's pretty quick. And now I'm going to look at the results, analysis and interpret. So let's see what uh, we have here. OK, so you see that uh, this is the failure plane. Uh, software will give you failure plane with the uh, um, most critical safety factor. It's 1.79, so this is more than one, which means that it's stable. Uh, what you can do is you can look at uh, different surfaces. So if you click this one, all surfaces. So this all the surfaces that software consider it, right? And out of all the surfaces, it found the most critical with the low safety factor. Uh, another thing you can go to here, filter surfaces. And you have this uh, filter here. Let's say you can look at um, 10 surfaces with the lowest factor of safety. Click OK and it shows you here location. So you see that it's almost the same, not really much change, uh, 1.78. Uh, remember that also selected Morganstone price. So you see Morganstone price gives you very similar location and it also gives you um, very similar safety factors. So the results are pretty similar. And another thing before I finish this tutorial, um, you can click here, show slices. So it will show you slices and then uh, 25 slices. And then you can look at each of the slice data. Just click here, slice number 14, slice number 10. You see all the data here. Well, maybe it's not very useful, but at least uh, you can look at the forces and lens and everything that is um, uh, software considered. Well, I need to finish this tutorial it's only 15 minutes, and I'm uh, about the time to finish it. Um, so there are a few other things. Um, I may uh, record another tutorial, but this is the basics that will help you to do slope stability analysis and get good results. Well, thanks for watching this tutorial, and have a nice day. Bye.